All right. Good afternoon and welcome to another Applied Physiology Friday. Today, we're going to be talking about the applications of heart rate variability. But before we get started, I want to give a shout out. Today, today's presentation is uh, in honor and respect of my uh, lovely and talented wife, Rachel. And in the background, we have TCC, Tallahassee Community College, where she currently applies her craft as a, an associate professor of biology. We have Drexel University, where she is a proud alum. That's where she earned her doctoral degree. And directly behind me, we have Archbishop Carroll, and that is where she began her coaching career. And uh, that's also where she worked in a med lab learning about heart rate variability and doing some pre-paradigm research on HRV. So without further ado, here we go. Or maybe some ado. All right. So today's topic, understanding HRV. We talked about heart rate variability last week, and we said that heart rate variability is going to be the measure of time between heartbeats. So here, when we take a look at, at our HRV, it's the distance between my R's, the, the R peak of the PQRST wave, which is the electrical pattern, the electrical conducting pattern of the heart. So what we're looking at here is how long does the heart spend resetting? And the amount of time that the heart spends resetting between beats is going to be an indicator of either sympathetic or parasympathetic activity or sympathetic or parasympathetic dominance. We talked last week about the difference between sympathetic and parasympathetic activity. My sympathetic activity, that is going to be my fight or flight phase, whereas my parasympathetic activity is going to be my rest and digest phase. Now, when we're looking at HRV, it's not that one is good and one is bad. It's just that one happens to be dominating the equation at that given instant in time or dominating that equation during whatever, whatever measurement period we're looking at. And what HRV is doing, it's given us another layer in athlete workload monitoring. So that is one of the big things in strength and conditioning and human performance right now. How hard are my athletes working from an internal load standpoint? So when we take a look at an internal load, what we mean is how hard it is their cardiovascular system working? How hard is their muscular system working during the workout and also after the workout where we're recovering for the next session? So what can heart rate variability tell you? And I, this, is a, this is a very good day for me. So my HRV score on this day was a 10. My, so in other words, I was 100% ready to attack a workout. So heart rate variability is going to tell me my readiness. And we can look at readiness as a measure of how prepared my nervous system is to take on the challenges of a workout or if we're working with if we're working with uh, clients that are not competitive athletes, we can use heart rate variability as a way to measure what their chronic stress level is. So when we look at readiness for a, a non-competitive athlete, we're not doing a workout as a, as a means to an end. Maybe we're doing workouts as an end unto themselves. The measure of readiness is going to tell us how, how prepared are they to face the challenges of the day. So if, if I have a, an individual or if I have an athlete that's a 10, they are ready to go. We're going to get into this a little bit later. Another thing we take a look at, another thing that heart rate variability can measure is my acute stress. So let's take a look at the word acute. The antonym of acute is going to be chronic. So acute stress is going to be short-term stress. What's going on in this period of time right here, day to day, whereas acute, uh, chronic stress, sorry, chronic stress is going to be 
what's going on over the course of a week, two weeks, month. So daily HRV readings are going to give us an acute measurement, whereas if we were to take these and string them together, that's going to give us a measure of chronic stress. We're going to get into that a little bit later on. Another, another way we can view heart rate variability is going to be an index of recovery. So we give an athlete a workout, and then we let them rest, and then we measure their heart rate variability, and heart rate variability will be one data point that's going to tell me, are my athletes ready for another workout? There's another index of recovery that I use with Polar that gives me what, what I refer to as accumulated fatigue. And again, that's, we're going to cover that in a future presentation. So when I'm looking at data points, for heart, I look at heart rate variability, that's going to be one measure. We're going to look at my polar flow data. That's going to give an index of chronic fatigue. And then my third one is going to be some sort of a somatic or perceptual index of fatigue. So how, how good do I feel today? And that way there, I have what's called triangulation of data. I have three points, and that's going to help steer my ship. So uh, Coach Murphy, when you go down to Jack's Beach and you see those guys driving those container ships from the port of Jacksonville to the port of wherever, they're using triangulation. They're using three points to help get them to where they want to go. If they're using one point, that's not going to help. If they're using two points, that might help. But to use triangulation, three data points, constantly, uh, constantly moving and constantly in relation to each other is going to get me to where I want to go. So if I have one data point, I have no data points. I'm going to need three to really drive it. So heart rate variability is going to be our first driver of athlete preparedness. The next thing that we can use heart rate variability for is a measure of overtraining and overreaching. And as an advertisement for next week, we're going to be talking about the difference between overtraining and overreaching and which of these is sympathetic and which of these is parasympathetic. Now, the most important caveat of heart rate variability is it is driven by the principle of individual response. Individual response, no two people are the same. So I can't look at my HRV and say my HRV score is 58. And then if Coach Murphy's HRV score is 68, oh, Doc, you're 10, you're 10 points below Coach Murphy. So you're not ready to go. But Coach, you're at, 50, you're at 68. Let's turn up the gas. Heart rate variability is, is individually specific. And that's where we get this reading here. Uh, and it's going to be a scale of 1 to 10 sympathetic and 1 to 10 parasympathetic. So on this day right here, I was a 10. Green means go. And I, I had a hard training session scheduled for, this, for the day of this HRV in question. So the the app that i use is elite hrv i use that in it's a bluetooth driven app that's run through my iphone and i use that in conjunction with a polar h10 heart rate monitor as uh for full disclosure neither h neither uh elite hrv nor polar uh sponsors me i buy my own stuff so uh, i have no uh no underlying biases for for that equipment um so HRV moderated by individual response. What I'm looking for, I'm not looking at this number here, not looking at this number here. I'm looking at this number here. So with heart rate, back in the day when I was at Syracuse, if you look at my training logs and I was at the Cuse from 91 to 94 doing my master's degree, and in my training logs, I kept a, I kept a measure of heart rate. Now, next week, we're going to look at overtraining and overreaching. And when I overtrain and when I overreach, in both instances, I have a low heart rate. But what's going on is that I'm getting, there's going to be different drivers of that low heart rate. 
in, in one instance, my body is, my heart rate is low because it's chronically exhausted. In another instance, my heart rate is low because I've undergone adaptation. So what heart rate variability does is it interprets my heart rate and it also interprets what's going on between the beats to give me my HRV. And that research was done by, in part by my wife, Rachel, when she was working in the med lab and part-time coaching it, uh, Archbishop Carroll. So essential considerations for using my heart rate variability. First thing we take a look at, to the nervous system, stress is stress. And what I mean by that is that the, the body, the nervous system can't tell the difference between physiological stress and psychological stress. So if I do a hard workout today and tomorrow my, phys my, my, physio my physiology, my physiological system, my cardio, especially my cardiovascular system, is going to be in a state of activation. It's going to be trying to recover from today's hard interval workout or today's hard ride. Now, let's take a look at psychological stress. In psychological stress, again, the, the nervous system is going to get wound up. It's going to get up into a fight or flight state. So since HRV is a measure of physiology and psychology, and my, my nervous system can't distinguish between it being a physical stressor or a psychological stressor, it, like I said, it's going to be one measurement. But the other thing that we take a look at is the fact that stress is stress. If my nervous system isn't ready to go, it doesn't matter if it's psychological stress or physiological stress. I need to dial back the workout. For an example of this is going to be what I call the Coach Marr philosophy. Coach Marr is the hockey strength and conditioning coach at the University of Michigan. And major shout out to him. I first saw him speak back in 2015 at the NSCA training for hockey conference. And the, the thing that really impressed me about Coach Marr is that me being an academician, I really appreciated how Coach Marr would dial back his training uh, for his college hockey players during exam weeks. So during midterms and finals, Coach Marr is going to di would dial back the physiological stress of resistance training, of anaerobic training, to allow the athletes to concentrate and to devote their energies to the psychological stress that the professors like me are giving them in terms of exams and papers. So Coach Marr, using exam week as a deload, phenomenal. I really appreciate how uh, he respects the role of us academicians. The other thing we take a look at in terms of considerations for using HRV, the first thing is that reliability improves usability. What I mean by reliability is consistency in measurement. Shout out to Mike Kalsher at Rensselaer Polytechnic right here in Troy, New York. He's the one that taught me the concept of reliability back in 1988. So Mike talking about reliability, he's talking about consistency in measurement. So when we're looking at taking our HRV measurement, the important thing is that we do it at the same time in the same body position every single day. So I recommend taking the daily measurement immediately upon waking up while we're still lying down. The reason why, we talked about this last week. We said that immediately, that when the, when the body is asleep, it is in the maximum parasympathetic state that it, that it can be in. So if we take the heart, our HRV immediately after waking up, we're going to get a true measure of sympathetic or parasympathetic dominance for the day. And that's going to allow me to adjust my workouts. That's coming up uh, down the road for in today's presentation. So here we go. What does this mean? On this day here, 
I had a readiness score of 10. My HRV was 10. I was in perfect balance. So green, green means go in terms of nervous system preparedness. Now, what I would do is use HRV in conjunction with my polar workload monitoring. And if I am recovered and my heart rate variability is a 10, I'm going. I'm going to burn matches and I'm going to have a workout that day. If my HRV is 10, but I'm still in a accumulated fatigue state, I'm, I'm going to, I may dial back volume, but intensity is good to go. Are you sharing your screen? Oh, am I? No, I don't think you're not. I don't oh. see it. Oh, okay. Hold on. Whoa. I didn't know we should. I don't know. I didn't know what happened. I'm sorry about that. All right. Whoa. Can we see it now? Yes. Yes. yes? Cool. Yes. All right. Let me, uh, give me a minute. Let me, let me go back. I'm sorry about that. Um, so let's do a quick recap. Thanks for, uh, thanks for calling me out on that. I appreciate that. So technology, it's good, it's bad. All right, so can everybody see this now? Yeah? Yes. Perfect. All right, so we got our HRV, quick recap, measurement of what's going on between the beats. And this is going to indicate, am I sympathetic or parasympathetic? It's going to, and then by measuring HRV, it's going to give me another layer to workload monitoring. All right. Our next slide right here. This is where we were. We talked about what HRV can tell you as a measure of readiness, acute stress. So right here, right here, my, uh, my heart rate was, or my HRV was uh, 10. So that told me I was ready to go. And again, moderated by individual response. My considerations, so we were talking about how the nervous system cannot differentiate between my physiological and psychological stress. So uh, if, uh, if my body is coming off of a very hard workout the previous day, I'm, I'm going to rate in a fatigued state in heart rate variability. I may have a red or a yellow. If I'm under psychological stress, I'm... Um, I'm, if I'm a student, college student, and I am in exam week, I may rate a red or a yellow, even though the previous day was going to be, was a low physical stress. So as a strength coach, the role of the strength coach as, the, as a stress manager, I'm going to dial it back. And this was my Coach Mar philosophy. The next, the, the other thing we take a look at as a recap is that HRV is it's going to be the, the more reliable my HRV measurements, the more usable my HRV measurements. So I'm going to take HRV as soon as I wake up and I'm going to take it lying down and I'm going to keep that same body position every single time that I take my, uh, my heart rate, my heart rate variability. And then that's going to give me very usable or very actionable data. All right, so now here we are. This is where we left off. If I have a 10, a 10 is going to be green. So uh, when we look at our HRV, everything between, everything in green, and this is going to be seven sympathetic to seven parasympathetic. If I'm in that green range, that means go. That means my nervous system is ready. And depending on what my physiological fatigue state says, I'm going to be ready to go. So if I am in a balanced state from workload and a green heart rate variability, I'm ready to go. I am ready to, I am ready to train that day. I'm ready to take on uh, all the challenges that the world may throw at me. Now, if I have, in terms of HRV, if I'm between four, five, and six, either sympathetic or parasympathetic, four, five, and six here, four, five, and six here, what I'm going to do is cut the workout by anywhere from 50 to 70 per 75 percent, depending on what my 
what my workload, what my chronic fatigue level from polar is going to say, my polar flow is going to say. So if I'm in a recovered state physiologically, but a nervous system state says I'm caution, I'm going to cut my workout by 50%. So what I mean by that is if I'm planning, say, six times one minute at 90% max heart rate, now what I'm going to do is three times one minute at 90% maximum heart rate. So intensity is going to stay the same. Recovery between intervals is going to stay the same, but the volume is going to be cut in half. So when we're looking at my cautions, I, I want to maintain intensity. I want to maintain recovery interval, but what I want to do is reduce volume. Red, if I'm red sympathetic or if I'm red parasympathetic, that means danger ahead. So that, that means that I need to have an easy day. My something is happening in my nervous system and what I need to do is to dial it back. Now for my game day edition. So coach Murphy, when you are coaching your athletes and it's game day and we're doing HRV monitoring and I have a, I have a whole team of, uh, I got, I have 22 players on my hockey team that are playing that night and they're all going to have different, heart rate variability scores. So when I have uh, when I have the athletes that have a green, green means go for them. They're going to do the exact same warm up that they've been doing all along. They don't need to worry about they don't need to worry about anything. They they are they are dialed in. They are 100% ready to go from a nervous system perspective and they can go and light the candles. Now, Let's take a look at the difference between sympathetic and parasympathetic. If I am yellow or red, sympathetic. So if I'm yellow or red down on this end here, my slider is down here. What that means is that I'm already in a fight or flight state. So my body is already revved up. So from a nervous system standpoint, so all I need to do is tune up the cardiovascular system, get my cardiovascular system to match my nervous system, and now we're ready to play. So my athletes that are red or yellow, we're gonna dial back the, the nervous system activation. So we may, take less, we may take less shots, or we may do less live drills. Their, their nervous system is primed, ready to go. So. Uh, they're, all they need is a little bit of cardio, and away they go. An example uh, from me, from my life, uh, last year, I, had a, uh, I, I was up in New York for spring break, and I flew into Atlanta on Friday afternoon, and I was racing outside of Atlanta on Saturday morning. And uh, the airline, which will remain nameless, lost my luggage, and I didn't get to bed until 11 o'clock that night. And I had, I had to get up at four to prepare for the race. So when I woke up and I took my HRV, I was a three sympathetic. So I can't change the fact that I have to race. That's race day. I've been training for a month for this one day. And just because I'm red doesn't mean I'm going to say, I'm not going to race that day. What I'm going to do is acknowledge the fact that my nervous system is already in fight or flight. So when I got to the race, all I did was jog for five minutes, get my cardiovascular system ready, stretch, and I was ready to go. And I ran a, a time that was very, very fast and I got second overall and it was a, it was a great race. And that, what that did was it proved to me that even though I wasn't green, that if I adjust my warm up, I'm gonna be able to to race well. I just need to know what's going on. Am I sympathetic dominant? Well, if I'm sympathetic dominant, I just reduce my activation component. So I'm not gonna go as long. I'm not gonna go as hard in my warm up. I'm ready to go. Just put me on the line. Let's do it. Now, let's say that that day I go to the I wake up and I'm parasympathetic dominant. 
Well, what this means is that I'm way out here. And now my body is in a rest and digest state when I need it to be right here, when I need it to be ready to go, when I need it to be ready to shift into a fight or flight. So if my body is parasympathetic, I'm going to have to pull here. So now what I want to do with my athletes that are parasympathetic on game day is give them a little bit of a longer warm up. We have to get their nervous system to match their cardiovascular system. So it takes the cardiovascular system about 20 minutes to get firing on all cylinders. So what we may do is a little more parasympathetic activation here. If I have an athlete that wakes up on game day and they are a three or a four, so they're here. And if we're looking at hockey and their first line, so they're starting, what I'm gonna do is advise them to come in early and put up 50 shots, 100 shots on net. Do a little bit more passing work, do a little bit more stick work, really activate that nervous system, and then go roll through the full warm up. And then, bam, now we're ready to go. We've pulled that nervous system up into being prepared to compete. So, that is all I have for today. If you want to get in touch with me, you want to reach out, hit me up Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Run Bike Doc. Email me at run, runbikedoc at gmail.com. If you missed, missed any of the videos, I, got, I have them all archived. Just hit YouTube, Doc Hickey. If you want to go through and see this one uh, with all the slides, shoot me an email. I'll, I'll give you the slides. Uh, my apologies for the technical difficulties. But I thank everybody for showing up today. And we will be back at it next week.